Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're doing a viewer request on how to rotate text like this instead of like this. I'm gonna be showing you two different ways how to do this, and the first, I'm just gonna show you how to tilt it, and then the second time, I'm gonna show you how to tilt it even better and maybe stick it to a surface or something like that. So, without any further ado, make sure you've subscribed and let's jump into the video. The clip that we're going to be working with today is right here in our timeline on the edit page. It's of a cemetery in Georgia. I think it was in Savannah, Georgia. And all it is is just a quick pan. And I'm going to be using this wall right here to demonstrate the text. So the first way we can do this is super easy. All of this is actually going to be inside of Fusion today. Don't be worried about it because, again, it's, it's pretty easy. So we're gonna drag these out into the middle by selecting both of them, dragging them around together. And then right up here in this main little bar of tools, we have this T, that's for text plus. We're gonna grab that and also a little bit further over to the right, we're gonna grab a merge node. Now these will be linked when you put them in if your text node is selected, but we're gonna unlink them so that we can drop this into this line. And all we're gonna do to do that is click on our merge, hold shift, you'll see that that goes away. And then we'll continue holding shift let go of click once it's inside this line, and now it's in this line. And we can drop our text right in there. We're gonna type example, and now we have our text. It's that easy to make text in Fusion. How do we make it go like this? Well, we're gonna go over to transform, we're gonna go to rotation, and we're gonna change transform mode from characters to lines. Characters is going to do each individual letter by itself, Words is going to do individual words by themselves. Here, let me demonstrate characters for you guys so you can see. So, with characters selected, if I drag this Y slider over, you'll see that it does each one individually. Which can be cool if that's what you're going for, but today we're going to be using lines. So, all you have to do to make text go like this is grab your Y rotation right here, and again, this will need to be expanded. So then we'll go Y and it just turns, just like that. Super easy to get just the basic tilt going, but the more advanced way, we're gonna need to do a little bit of tracking. So we'll get rid of this text node for now and this merge node, and then we'll hit Shift Space to pull up our Select Tool menu. And then we're gonna go ahead and type in Planar Tracker, or as many letters as you need of that until this pops up. Then we're gonna hit Add. And it should, if we had media in one selected, just go right into this line after media one. And now what we need to do is find something that's in the frame the whole time. So I'm gonna scrub through. And that's not a need necessarily, but it will be helpful if what you're tracking doesn't leave the frame. So it looks like we should be able to use this headstone right here. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning, frame zero. And if you can't go back to frame zero, if you have to start at like 105, say, the first step that you're gonna do once you're over here in your planar tracker inside the inspector is to click where it says reference time, click on set. And then you'll see that your reference time changes to 105 because if your reference time and the frame that you're on right now don't match, it won't let you do the track. So just set it wherever you're starting from and then you'll be able to do the track. But we're gonna start from zero in this case so I'm gonna set it at zero. And now I'm going to draw a pretty loose box around this headstone because I want to be able to use other things in the image to track with as well, like in relation to the headstone because that might give us a little bit of a better track than just this gray block as opposed to this gray block contrasting against its background. Now that we have that drawn out, I'm going to change tracker from point to hybrid point area, and I'm going to change motion type to translation and rotation. We don't really need it to be looking for a whole bunch of things since the camera is stationary, it's just going to be moving a little bit. But play around with these because if you don't get a clean track, a lot of the time if you just switch this up, you can have much better results right from the get-go. If you want to learn more about tracking, I'll put a video in a card up here that is all about tracking so that we can get more into that. But today we're talking about text, so all of these are looking fine, and I'm going to click on this little play button right here that goes all the way through that line, and that is the track to end button. So I'm going to click on that, you'll see that all of our lines here turn green, and then we get a bunch of dots. All of those dots in there are the tracking points that it's using, so that if we scrub back through this, we can see that that's a really good track. 
most of those dots are green. It's got a lot of good data. When it's red, that's a tracking point that is lost. But when it has all of these other references, it's gonna be fine. What we're gonna do now is change operation mode from track to corner pin. And then we're gonna draw our corner pin, we'll kind of draw, we're gonna drag these four corners to the four corners of whatever it is we are trying to get our text to stick to. So we'll just say the front of that wall right there, we'll bring that up just a little bit and in. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll bring that down just a smidge. Move it back, yeah. So you generally, Get as close to the corners as you can. It's ideal if you can see all of the corners, but in this case we can't. So now we have that corner pinned. We're gonna re-add a text node and then we'll write example in this one as well. And now if we just drag our text output into our foreground input, that little green triangle on our planar tracker, we will see that it just pops right up. Right there. It needs to be a bit bigger so we can see it. Just like that. But that is going to be stuck on our wall there. So if we hit play from the very beginning, we can watch through and it's stuck right to that wall. It's moving up because I moved it up, but there we go. It's going to follow that tracking data of the headstone. So if you want to get a little bit more precise with this, you could follow the tracking data from the wall itself. But in this case, I thought it might be too busy and I'm not sure if my camera was capturing enough data to get that right. So I use the headstone. But you can see, example sticks right to that wall. Looks really good. That's my favorite way to stick text to something and make it tilt is by using that corner pinning technique. I'm a big fan of it because it often gives really good results. Like, we could even take our corners and put them on this right here, and our text will lay down on top of this one, just like that. And it's going to use that same tracking data from the headstone to put our text on that. You can see it's moving a bit there, we would probably need to track a different way for that but it's so easy to put text wherever you need text to be using that corner pinning method. If you learned anything from this video, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, please leave a comment down below because I would love to talk to you guys. Until next time, my name's Garrett Harding. This has been How to Turn Text Like This, and I'll see you on Thursday.